if you want the world to be a better place, you can't do it through a position of ignorance and you also can't do it through a position of belligerence. So I'll give you an example. I uh, didn't like the way that uh, Bitcoin Cash launched. I didn't like that they tried to actually kill Bitcoin with an emergency difficulty retargeting and took, had literally the same hash rate as Bitcoin and half of its price. I didn't like that. It was more centralized. It, you know, people put and expose their private keys to some new wallet that they downloaded from a Wix website where anyone, any Wix admin could have like backdoored that, that Electrum Cash wallet signed by some Ronald Fook ball guy, which doesn't sound like a real name to me. I mean, maybe he's Dutch and it is a real name or something. Um, but like everyone, everyone was put at risk. Bad operational security, everyone was put at risk. Look at the difference between the Bitcoin Cash launch and our launch, right? Bitcoin Cash launch, get your private keys and stick them in some weird EXE that no one is audited. It's already pre-compiled for you and it's on a Wix website. That's how Bitcoin Cash launched. And it still worked out. No one lost any money. But that don't mean drunk driving is a good idea. A lot of people drive drunk and don't get into an accident. Does that mean you should drive drunk? Right? Your private keys are your money. Don't ever put your private keys into some piece of software that you're not totally familiar with. That's why, Bic that's why Hex does not want your keys ever. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. We don't want your keys. You hide your keys. You keep your keys safe. If you have a hardware wallet, keep them in Trezor or Ledger hardware wallet. Then if you use Electrum, your keys stay inside your device, and you sign your claim statement, and you submit your claim statement, and your keys stay in your device, and they're totally safe. You don't have a hardware wallet, that's fine. You can take a computer offline, put your keys in it, sign, securely delete the keys, and submit the signature offline. No risk, right? As a matter of fact, you might discover that some of your backups were old and that you needed to refresh them or that your memory was getting a little rusty and you might have forgot that 13th word, right? Or like I go down the list of like key security is actually hard, you know? It's good to go every once in a while check and make sure that if you need to come, like recover from a backup that you can. Well, we did that. We designed something that let you pay yourself for taking possession of your own keys and will let you continue to pay yourself for having possession of your own keys. It's like getting free mining hardware and free electricity. Staking Hex is like getting free mining hardware and free electricity. You get all of the inflation, as long as you're an average stake, average size. Now, if you're bigger than, if you're longer than average, you're gonna get paid more and the other guys are gonna get paid less. If you're bigger than average, you're gonna get paid more, but less more. So staking longer, you can get up to 200% bonus shares, which is a three X. But staking bigger, you can only get 10% bonus shares. That's not very exciting, right? Like we, we did that as a, an anti-spam prevention and to emulate what they did with Jumbo CDs and to give opportunity for someone to build on top a contract that lets little guys get in and add up to a big guy. But then you, you, know, you have the counterparty risk of making sure that contract is audited and is secure. The best software is no software. If you can simplify and get rid of code, that code can't be buggy, right? Elon Musk will tell you this. Anyone that, that does development will tell you that like refactoring and getting a more beautiful, perfect, simplistic thing is like the ideal dream of every developer, but they never get to actually execute that dream because it's too time intensive and they end up just continuing down abstractions piled on top of abstractions. And then when the abstractions leak, they have to fix bugs. So, our launch is more secure than Bitcoin Cash's launch. Now, Roger and I, Roger Ver, we had a conversation back before the Bitcoin Cash fork, and I saw he was working with someone that pretended to be Satoshi, and I asked him, like, you know, why are you working with that guy? And he said, well, you know, he seems to know what he's talking about. And he was fooled by him. And unfortunately, good, honest people get fooled pretty often. It sucks. It makes the world a worse place. So I could. And so basically, like people get lined up politically. So the politics with Bitcoin Cash and Roger and I were Roger wants adoption 
and he wants to make a difference in the world, and that is very good. I support that. He supports freedom. He supports smaller governments. He supports economic education. We want the same goals. We want the same ends, right? He tried to make those things happen by trying to get Bitcoin to be more scalable. And the problem with that is that when you execute and force your will onto the thing, it kills the thing. So you remember earlier in this conversation, I told you that you can become more free by stop worrying about freedom a little bit. You can be more cool, stop worrying about being cool a little bit, right? Tactically, strategically, you can get, like if, if you try and get more scalability, it's not a perfect analogy, right? Because you try to get the thing and then you get less of the thing. Well, I guess it works for the freedom because you were, you know, It, if you introduce centralization to a blockchain product by reducing the number of developers that work on it or reducing the geographic uh, spread of its miners or reducing the, the ethical and worldview diversity of its participants, then it's easier to execute the bad influence on the system. So the mafia could get specific notes, put guns to their head. The government could just in one country be like, yo, we're shutting it down or nationalizing it or taking it over or these are all possible things, right? And we want to not have them happen. So when he tried to do the right thing, the right goal, the right end, get more throughput and cheaper fees, I mean, fees were $60, $70 back then. It's bullshit. It's not good, right? He wanted the right things, but the way that he went to try and get them caused everyone that bought to lose money. So it launched it um, on when it launched the first time on hit BTC. So basically, only a couple exchanges would let you trade the coins before you could possibly have sent them in. So if you held your keys off exchange the safe way, once the fork happened, you had to send them onto exchange and wait for confirmations. But for a couple exchanges, if you did it the unsafe way and left your coins on the exchange, then when the fork happened, you were able to trade before other people because your coins are already in the order book, right? So the first one to open was uh, hit BTC and there was actually a futures market, I think on OKX. And it, it, on some exchanges, I think on hit BCC, it wicked up to like four times worth more than a Bitcoin, but just a stupid red wick, right? When someone's, there's an empty order book and someone places an order, it just wrecks the chart forever because someone blew the order book out, right? Well, that's what happened in the beginning on HitBTC. And then, you know, on August 1st, when the fork actually happened, it, uh, it came in at about 30%. You know, Bitcoin Cash now is at like 3%, 3.5%, I think. So someone lost 90% of their money by choosing that horse. And then on top of, on top of losing 90% of their money, like, it was also a bear market too. So like you lost against Bitcoin and you lost against fiat at the same time. So like you double lost for a good period there. Well, that didn't make anything better. That made everything worse. Now, they are doing some stuff now, which seems pretty cool. And if it's already hit bottom and the price is already bottomed out, okay, well maybe maybe there can be upside. I don't, I don't think any fork that has game theory, so, the Mt. Gox trustee, this whole long conversation was a story about me telling you how you should become more powerful by stop trying to check nuts and be more political. And so I'm happy to work with Roger because I believe that he has the best goals in mind, the same goals that I have in mind, right? I'm happy to work with the man. He's got a good audience. He's got good, you know, properties. He's got good stuff that he wants to do. Okay, well, you know, what more do you want? Okay, so I wish some tactics were different. Well, maybe... If we're buddies and we're talking, maybe I can help push the tactics towards good places. And by push, I really mean pull, right? I'm just saying, like, here's what you want. Okay, here's the data, and here's why I think that you can get what you want this way better, right? And then, like, if you, it should work. I, I, usually, I usually have good conversations with people, and they usually get more of what they want after they talk to me. I try and improve people's lives. Even, even my enemies, I try and improve their lives. Like, uh, I think Abraham Lincoln said it best. Do I not destroy my enemies if I make them my friends, right? So I, I don't think I've ever had a, a enemy relationship with Roger, but 
it's like you should be effective politically and find agreement where they can be had and make progress instead of putting your head in the sand and pretending that everything is perfect even though you don't know what other things are even doing and then you just get left behind right like like why did facebook get replaced by why did myspace get replaced by facebook and why did uh j like jabber get replaced by whatsapp and why did uh like i get on the list right like people want better stuff they choose the better stuff you have to keep bringing the better stuff you, you can't you like Maybe people want anonymity one day. Well, you got to bring it to them. So, hex, more secure launch, cares more about your privacy, cares more about your security, took less risk, right? Had audits. Bitcoin Cash launched, no audits. Bitcoin Cash launched, Wix website. Unknown, executable you run, could steal all your keys. And then the price just died from 50% of a Bitcoin down to 3% of a Bitcoin. So they might be able to do okay things now, but damn, they had a lot of pain to get there, right? And what and what they do? They gave 40,000 coins to the Mt. Gox trustee. They gave 200,000 coins, about 190, 189,000 uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to the Mt. Gox trustee. Not only say give, you know, they weren't smart to do the fork better. I did it smarter. I put more thought into it. I don't let the Mt. Gox trustee have any entries in the UTXO set. So he can't claim, so he can't dump. Because him dumping uh, 140,000 Bitcoin worth of claims onto the heads of the believers to help pay Mark Karpolis and p perhaps Peter Vincennes, that does not make the world a better place, right? This currency is designed to appreciate. This is design intention, right? Which is different. Bitcoin was designed it was also designed to appreciate. That's why the the cutting the interest the interest rate in half every four years is in there. It's not in the white paper. That game theory of cutting the interest rate in half every four years is not in the Bitcoin white paper. It is one of two pumpamentals that Bitcoin has, and it's worked out very well for it. Hex just has more. 